Hi, I'm Amanda Jones, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to solve a binomial probability problem, and we're going to do this with the binomial formula. Now, if you would like to know when it is appropriate to use the binomial formula, you would need some context. So this one, of course, doesn't have that, but I have that in another video um, where I take a word problem and talk about why uh, we need the binomial for this particular problem and the, the four requirements that are met. Um, so that is in another video if you're looking for that. But in this one, I'm just going to show, like, how do you use that binomial formula? How does it work? So we've got our N given here. This is the number of trials, okay? We've got our P given. This is the number, the probability of a success in one trial, in a single trial. Um, and we want to know the probability of two successes. So what you're computing here is the probability of R, which is two successes, exactly two successes, in six trials, when the probability of a success on that trial, one iteration of that experiment, is 0.17, or 17% if you like percentages better. Okay, so we're going to start with just writing that probability formula, the binomial formula. Okay, so we're looking for the probability of R, which is the number of successes. And the first thing in this formula is a combination. So it's N, C, R. Okay, and some um, books or other math professors may use a different notation here. They may use an C uh, with an N comma R. Our textbook actually uses this notation, but we have some worksheets and I personally use this one a little bit more. Uh, so, but the same thing, it's the same thing, don't let that confuse you, okay? And then, um, so that's the combination, and then we have P, okay, so multiplication understood here, and P is raised to the R power, and then we have Q, and it is raised to the n minus r. So this r is in an exponent, and this n minus r is an exponent of q as well here. Um, so this is the formula, but it looks a little confusing, and so if you don't know how to work it, it can be a problem, okay? So this ncr, it calculates the number of ways that we can have two successes in six trials, okay? P is the probability of a success, as we've talked about, and we raise that to R, the number of successes that we want. Um, so this would be like if we wrote 0.17 times 0.17, because we want those two successes. And then Q, which we haven't been given, it is the probability of a failure. In a binomial, you either have a success or a failure. That is the, um, the why we use that prefix of by for two. Uh, it's a, a two outcome experiment. It's either a success or it's a failure. And so P and R are gonna cover that sample space. Either you have a success or you have a failure. And so they should add to one, okay? They're complements of each other, which we've talked about in probability. So to find Q, I could do one minus P. Okay, so I'll find my Q that way. All right, so then we can just, at this point, just plug and chug. All right, just gonna plug into this formula. Okay, so we're looking for the probability of it. Two successes, I just like to use this notation here. That just is what is mean, this is what I'm computing, the probability of a two successes. Then my N is six, so this is gonna be six C two. My P is 0.17, so this is going to be 0.17, and it's raised to the R, which is 2. And then we have our Q, which I computed to be 0.83, and it's raised to the N minus R, which would be the number of failures that you have. If you have two successes, then you're going to have the number of trials minus the number of successes that you want failures. So that would be the 6 minus 2 here. And you can kind of think of that as the number of failures that you have. And I always like to, but I don't ever plug in this in the exponent. That can get a little bit tricky in a calculator. Uh, whether that minus 2 stays in that exponent or whether it comes back down can be a little bit problematic. And so I always just go ahead and say, you can do 6 minus 2, hopefully. <laughs> just go ahead and do it. And that's what you need to plug into the calculator. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about 
some um, common mistakes that you might find when you're plugging this in and talk about how to put it into a calculator real quick. So this, first of all, this combination, um, we in my classes use a TI-30, XIIS is a common one that we use, a Texas instrument, or some of my students use the TI-34s and up or down <laughs> the 83s, 84s uh, graphing calculators. So if you have either of those, a Texas instrument, um, then if you have a graphing calculator, you'll want to put, push the math button and then scroll over. You will should see a place where you can scroll over to the PRB menu. That's what you're looking for, PRB, which is short for probability. So you're looking for the probability menu. In the um, smaller calculators like a TI-30 XII, um, you are going to have a PRB button. It's usually kind of in that top left corner. Okay, so you're looking for this menu. And in other brands of calculators, you should be able, you're just looking for a probability menu. Um, and then some of them actually have like an NCR button that you're gonna press like the second button and then you'll find that this is written like above one of those other buttons. So lots of options, lots of, um, you should be able to, especially if you have a multifunction calculator, you should be able to find that probability menu and have this function built in. Okay, it has a formula, but, um, but yeah, it should be built in. Okay, I recommend to my students to go ahead and compute this, like just come to it, put it in your calculator. And the way you're gonna do it is you, with the Texas Instruments at least, is you need to put in the six first. So type six, then go to that PRB menu, hit that NCR button, the calculator calls, looks like this, okay? and then hit enter and it'll take you to the home screen and you'll see six NCR and then you hit in your R, your two. So it will look like six NCR two on um, especially like the TI 30s. Okay. And the graph, some graphing calculators look like this. Some actually like input the six and the two into those spots, but that's how you'll hit the buttons. Okay, so if you do that, go like I said, I, I would go ahead and do that. It's 15, and it will never be a decimal. It's a whole number always because you're looking at how many successes in six trials. So always going to be a whole number answer. So no rounding error problems there. Just go ahead and do it. Write it down, um, and then you can put this all in your calculator. I would recommend at once, just like this. So that's how I would put it in and you might need to put a multiplication symbol in there that might help you to have that in there, okay? And so put that all in, hit enter, you should get this result. And it, it is, I got two, um, 2, 0.2057, so usually binomials were three decimal places. And that's because um, that's what's given in our table. So there you go, you should get 0 0.206, okay? All right, if you have any questions about this, feel free to comment down below. Um, I try to get to those if I can. If you're one of my students, of course, come to office hours or talk to me after class or before class, and I can um, um, walk with you on anything that you might be struggling with. So I'm here to help, and I hope that this helped you get started on the binomial formula. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.